I like how you call homosexuality an abomination. I don't say homosexuality is an abomination, Mr. President. The Bible does. Yes, it does. Leviticus. 18.22. Chapter and verse. I wanted to ask you a couple of questions while I had you here. What is up, guys? Welcome back to the Wildcast. Hope you're all doing well out there. In this video, we're going to be going back in the past to a story that happened back in 2015. Now, I didn't talk about this at the time because obviously I didn't have a show back in 2015, but this was something that I followed and almost everybody who was covering politics slash law uh, was covering this. this. This was a big deal back in the day because this story happened right after the Supreme Cor Court voted in June of 2015 in the Oberfeld decision to legalize gay marriage, to extend constitutional rights to gay uh, couples so they can get married. And a person who was not okay with this was this Kentucky Rowan County um, former clerk, uh, county clerk, Kim Davis, who you're seeing a picture of on the on the left there. And um, she refused to accept the applications and issue marriage license to multiple couples who were asking uh, who were trying to get licenses to get married. Right. And because of her religious decisions, she decided to ignore she knew about the Supreme Court decision. She knew that the Supreme Court's precedent and legal decision was binding on her as a government official. As you know, as I've explained, uh, Supreme Court is the highest court in the land and all other courts, uh, federal appeals courts, federal district courts, state appeals courts, state courts, state trial courts. Everybody is bl uh, obliged to um, to abide by the decisions of the Supreme Court. So like I said, in June of 2015, the Supreme Court handed down the Oberfell versus Hodges decision where they said said that same-sex couples can no longer be denied marriage licenses because it is a violation of their 14th Amendment rights. OK, so that, that decision was done by the time she did this. So she cited, of course, being a religious nut that she is under God's authority. She said that according to God's authority, she does not believe that men and men and women and women should not be getting married. And therefore, she took it upon herself to ignore the law of the land, to ignore the Supreme Court and to go by what she perceives to be God's authority. I'm interested in selling my youngest daughter into slavery as sanctioned in Exodus 21-7. She's a Georgetown sophomore, speaks fluent Italian, always cleared the table when it was her turn. What would a good price for her be? Now, of course, we don't know where this God is. I've never seen him. She's never presented him in a uh, in a court of uh, courtroom or anywhere. No, nobody's been able to prove this God exists. But nevertheless, Christians love to use him. Certain kinds of Christians, conservative Christians, like to use this imaginary God to deny people rights. Right. So I want to talk about Christians in a second uh, for a second here before I don't want to insult our religious people. So America's filled with a lot of Christians, some of the most nicest and kindest and accepting people that I personally know uh, in my life are um, liberal Christian women. OK, in my 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 opinion, they're the most kindest and accepting people ever. They believe in a loving God who's accepting of everybody. They don't go by the, you know, a fire and brimstone murdering uh, maniac of a God that is described in the Old Testament. Most While thinking about that, can I ask another my chief of staff, Leo McGarry, insists on working on the Sabbath. Exodus 35.2 clearly says he should be put to death. Am I morally obligated to kill him myself, or is it okay to call the police? Most of them have never read the Bible, but <laughs> most Christians have not. I'm not, you know, just that's just a fact based on the stat. They've done studies like uh, religious organizations, Gallup. They've done, done polls where Christians say, we haven't actually read the Bible. They basically get downloaded information based on their parents or based on the church they go to, and they don't actually take time to read the Bible. I've read every single holy book from all the religions, okay? Um... Uh, the Quran, the Torah, um, the Bible, of course, the Old Testament and the New Testament. The Old Testament is the the Christian version of the Old Testament is like a ripoff of the Jude uh, the Jewish Torah. It's not the entire Torah. There are parts of it that are missing because <laughs> Christianity uh, in the time of the Roman Empire and proceeding after the Roman Empire, they have been 
edits that have been done to the Torah to take away some stories. They literally voted uh, voted on some of these councils to keep this story in the Bible and that story out. So p- Christians have no idea what's actually in their books. And if they read it, read it, if these good, you know, liberal Christian women actually read the Old Testament, they would be horrified. The uh, God of the Old Testament is one of the most vicious and m- maniacal characters in fiction. Does the whole town really have to be together to stone my brother John for planting different crops side by side? Can I burn my mother in a small family gathering for wearing garments made from two different threads? Think about those questions, would you? Right? He's a murdering, child murdering, rapist, incest supporting, uh, abortion supporting lunatic. Now, there's a passage in the Old Testament to back up what I just said. Okay, there's a story where a guy goes to a Jewish temple and asks the asks the uh, the priest if he can actually uh, give his wife an abortion because he suspects that she cheated on him. And the priest gives him some some uh, potion. They call it, I can't remember the name, but that story is in the Bible. God, uh, the, this priest, it's not technically God, but it's in the it's in the Old Testament where the priest says, "Give this poison water to your wife so she has a miscarriage and kills the kid." What is that called? Abortion. Oh, right. So why is that there uh, in the Bible? Because according to that story, the, the Old Testament is totally okay with abortion. Did you know that if you're a Christian out there? No, you don't know that because your priest never told you. Because there's a political, you know, uh, uh, battle that has been created by politicians to get people to fight over abortion. When the Bible is to- totally, totally okay with it. Okay? My whole point here is that people should read their Bibles, then they'll learn that this God character that people have been talking about, it's all made up by men. There, it's not The Bible is not inspired by a God. It was not written by God. It was written by very, very power-hungry men who wanted to control two things, property and women. And women, they would, in some instances, women and property are the same thing. Women were their property, okay, especially in Islam. To give credit to God, I guess, God didn't write them, okay? If there is a God, these books were not written by him. These books were written by men, power-hungry men. And these are the men, these are the books that she wants to use to discriminate against gay people, okay? So I have a very big problem with people like Kim Davis. Luckily, America is running out of people like this. Here's one that's really important, because we've got a lot of sports fans in this town. Touching the skin of a dead pig makes one unclean, Leviticus 11.7. If they promise to wear gloves, can the Washington Redskins still play football? Can Notre Dame? Can West Point? Um, an increasing number of Americans do not believe in Christianity and do not identify as Christian. Okay? So that's a good development in my eyes because we're running out of people like this. And most Christians, to give them credit, support gay marriage. It's the really, really evangelical Christians like Kim Davis who are against gay marriage still. But most Americans, over 80 percent of Americans support gay marriage and over 50 percent, 52 percent exactly support gay marriage from the nominal Christian community of all the Christians put together. Okay, so things are moving in the right direction. As you guys can tell, I am for independent rights. I'm for anybody marrying whoever they want because it's not none of my business. I don't understand why Christians want to get in the uh, bedroom business of individual adults, okay? As long as they're not abusing anybody, as long as there's no children involved, as long as everybody is consenting, I don't care, and neither should you. Leave people alone to do their own business, okay? But Davis didn't want to do that. She denied these two couples, and other couples, but these two are the ones who are uh, suing, they, uh, she denied them marriage rights, and they, and uh, eventually they were given um, their marriage licenses by somebody else. But nevertheless, they moved to sue her in federal court, specifically in the Eastern District of Kentucky. That's a uh, that's a federal courtroom, and uh, Judge Bunning was the judge in control here, Judge David Bunning, and she he issued this ruling saying that these cases can move forward. So, um, forty two. U.S. Code 1983. I think that was the exact code uh, that they brought this under. And that's basically a constitutional violations uh, code where they sue for uh, uh, violations of constitutional rights. And the and they're saying that the discrimination that they faced at the hands of Kim Davis has caused uh, them damages, emotional damages, emotional distress, and many other things that they cited here. So it, it's a civil lawsuit. It's a federal civil lawsuit. Um, and and uh, 
they're going to move forward here. Okay, so it's not really they, they haven't asked for a specific amount of money, but they're asking for punitive and uh, exemplary and compensatory damages. And you can look those up if, if you want to know the definitions of each one. Uh, the punitive damages one is the most important one for me because I think there has to be punitive means punishment. Obviously, punitive damages are monetary damages that the defendants have to give to the uh, plaintiffs because of the discriminatory actions that they took. So here, Kim Davis would have to pay them if they win this uh, lawsuit certain amount of money for the uh emotional anguish and discriminatory uh you know damages that were done to them by her action so imagine this right they went like anybody else to get a license to get married because the supreme court said that they can get married now that's why they were at the uh, county clerk's office and all the other heterosexual couples were given these marriage licenses with no problem but then as soon as they came up uh, she took a look at them and realized it was two men and she said no. So the right that was given to all the other people in society was denied to them. Under our laws, which are the laws of man, um, coming from the Supreme Court and the Justice Department, these are the only things that matter. If you want your God's voice to be heard, tell him to come down here and then tell him to give us this dictation on the laws that he would want. Because the laws of man for coming from the Justice Department and the laws of nature allow for gay people to get married. Does a thunderbolt come down and kill a gay person, a lesbian, every time they have sex with another woman? No. That means nature's okay with that. And you can't do anything about it, okay? So man's law and nature's law is on the side of gay marriage. Gay people can do whatever they want in their private lives. You can't get in the uh, get in the way of that. If you don't want to get gay married, nobody's forcing you. Okay, Kim Davis can marry a guy all she wants, and she is married. Okay, so nobody is forcing her to get gay married, but nevertheless, she wants to prevent other people who she has nothing to do with, other individuals. She wants to prevent them from having uh, getting married to another person, whoever they love. They like because her imaginary God um, told her that it's, it was not OK. OK, you can't use your God to tell me what to do. I don't believe in your God. OK, I don't believe in some fairy tale book that was written by a bunch of Arab Jews 2000 years ago. I have no reason to listen to them. OK, if I was going to worship anybody, it would be the Valkyries. OK, they're my gods. Unfortunately, they don't exist either because they're just characters made up by our ancestors. <laughs> but nevertheless, I know that. OK, I like the Valkyries, but they, they're not real. They're not flying around up there. OK, these people are delusional. She actually thinks that her God is watching her. So, um, like, you know, what do you want? What do you want me to say? This is like childish five year old stuff. Like, do you still believe in Santa Claus, too? See, this is I don't want to get to a mocking tone, so I'm just going to move on here. So. Um, so let's get to the constitutional violations and what the Supreme Court said in their decision in Oberfell. So this is Judge Bunning speaking in his uh, rebuttal to uh, the defendant here, Kim Davis. So she he denied Kim Davis's request to dismiss this case on qualified immunity grounds. So Kim Davis was trying to dismiss this case by saying that she's a government official and therefore she had some right from somewhere. She doesn't really name it to to. Uh, be protected from civil litigation like this. Like she says that she has the right to discriminate as a government employee against the, this gay, these gay couples and she can't be sued for it. That's the argument she was making and the judge shut her down because there's no legal precedent. You, if you're a government employee, you have to follow the law and Supreme Court precedents are the law of the land and government officials have to abide by them. Okay. As the court noted in its previous order discussing qualified immunity, it is undisputed that the right to marry is protected by the 14th Amendment. And that's from uh, a decision back in 2003 by Toms v. Taft uh, from the Sixth Circuit Court of Appeals. And that was reaffirmed by the Supreme Court, as they uh, uh, explain here from Ober Oberfell. The right to marry is a fundamental right inherent in the liberty of the person and under the due process and equal protection clauses of the uh, 14th Amendment. Couples of the same sex may not be deprived of that right and that liberty. The court now holds that same sex couples may exercise the fundamental right to marry. No longer may this liberty be denied to them. State laws challenged by petitioners in these cases are now held in valid that's kim davis being denied to the extent that they exclude same-sex couples from civil marriages on the same terms and conditions as opposite sex couples so that's what uh, that's what the supreme court said in oberfeld 
which, like I said before, legalized gay marriage, basically, in essence. And the, when the Supreme Court makes a decision, then all state and local and federal gu- judges and government agencies have to abide by the Supreme Court's creed, uh, uh, edicts. That's just how it works here in America. Now, if the Congress passes something in the future that overrides that, then that could be an exception we can look at. So last thing here regarding the damage claims, the judge was leaning on the side that it would be difficult for them to get punitive and compensatory damages, as he says here. So he says that presumed damages are sometimes appropriate in place of compensatory damages when an injury has occurred, but is difficult to establish. And that was so basically what he was saying is that, yes, they were wrong by Kim Davis, uh, Kim Davis, but it would be difficult to get compensatory and punitive damages. I disagree with that. OK, uh, because I think that we need to send a message to anybody who thinks that they can discriminate against um, minority minority groups like this that they don't like for personal reasons. And we need to set a precedent on that. And a jury, if this goes to a jury, they will definitely side uh, with the uh, plaintiffs here, the two uh two couples who are suing and they would give him punitive damages because clearly she maliciously discriminated against the two, these two couples. And by the way, I forgot to give you guys the names here. So um, the Armalds and the uh, Yates, those are the two people who are bringing these two civil suits. Basically the same thing. They're both against Kim Davis and the facts are the same in the case. So that's why the judge fused them together and he gave his opinion on both of them together. And uh, he basically said that uh, the defendant is denied and the plaintiffs, both plaintiffs are granted their summary judgments. So the summary judgments were in support of the case going forward. And uh, we'll see how it goes. Most likely, I would say that the plaintiffs, it seems like they want to go to a jury trial and they want to get punitive and compensatory damages from a jury. Uh, But they could decide uh, for whatever reasons that they want to settle this. So we'll see how it goes. But the case is can move forward. So uh, what Kim Davis's lawyer wanted was for summary judgment to dismiss it completely. Okay, they were saying that Kim Davis was a government official and therefore she had some special right to deny these people um, their constitutional rights. If you're a government official, you're bound by the Constitution even more than a private citizen, like a private business would have more of an argument. But if you're a government official, she was she worked for the local government there. She was a county clerk for the uh, Rowan County. So she was bl- obliged to uh, abide by constitutional uh, edicts, Supreme Court edicts. And uh, she d- she refused to do that. So she had no leg to stand on with her arguments. And she was just there's no way that she was going to win this. One last thing. Well, you may be mistaking this for your monthly meeting of the ignorant, tight-ass club. In this building, when the president stands, nobody sits. So last thing here, this is a very welcome development from my perspective as somebody who supports individual rights of people. Again, nobody is forcing you to get a a gay marriage. If you don't want to get one, don't get one. Same way, nobody's forcing you to get an abortion. If you don't want to get one, don't get one. But you don't have the right to discriminate against other people and take away their rights and force them to carry a baby to term or not to get married based on your religious beliefs. You live according to your religious belief. You don't get to impose your religious beliefs on me or anybody else. It actually is an insult to all Christians that the Bible is actually accepted as some book that everybody's supposed to respect. The Bible is a very immoral book with incest and pedophilia and uh, murder and torture and genocide in it, which you should not be using as an example for anything. It's a horrible book, and people should not be putting their hands and swearing on it either. Okay, It's the most immoral book in the history of religions, Okay, or at least one of the most immoral ones. I'm sure you can find uh, others who are worse. But that's all I got to say for this video. Just look at the facts and try to make some rational decisions about what is real and what is not. That's my only advice here. Uh, If you want to support my work, you can do so on Patreon down below. There'll be a link. And at the end of the video as well, thank you so much for watching. See you guys next time. Peace.